Hey everybody, welcome back to another video about our wonderful new uh, Helix Firmware 2.9 update. And I wanted to do, I hope what's gonna be a short video, on actually what one of my real favorite new features is. And I, I kind of didn't notice this immediately upon getting the software. And then it dawned on me the other day that, that this feature was available. Now, any of you who followed my channel know that I did a video a long time ago using the split crossover paths to kind of make a, a makeshift high and low shelf equalizer, which we did not, at that time, have as part of our Helix or HX Stomp. Now, uh, upon doing that, it, it became so popular that the folks at Line 6 actually implemented a high and low shelf EQ, which was awesome and a huge thank you to them, and I use it all the time. There was one teeny little problem, though, when that update came out, and that problem was one of my favorite settings on the high and low shelf EQ was to set, uh, or sorry, on the split crossover, was to set the crossover point at 650 hertz and to be able to boost all the frequencies above that by a certain amount and... and or, boost or cut, or boost or cut all frequencies below that by a certain amount. The one problem was when it was implemented in the software update, the high and low shelf, the high shelf EQ could only go as low as two kilohertz, which basically discounted me from being able to go to my kind of preferred setting in most scenarios. Well, that has been fixed in software or firmware version 2.9. And I wanted to show you kind of some comparisons of the very subtle change that that allows, because I think it's really interesting. So I hope you guys listen on a good set of headphones or on a good set of speakers to hear the subtle differences I'm talking about. So let's go over to HX Edit and take a look. So what I've done here is I've used um, this preset that I made just the other, actually, I say I made this the other day. I actually made this far before this, this um, RevGen Purple preset. I actually made this far before the software came out uh, as I was a beta tester for the software. Um, so I had kind of, you know, at the time when I did that, I didn't notice, and this is, this is weeks ago, I didn't notice that our, our high and low shelf, uh, or high EQ shelf EQ could go below two kilohertz. So when I dialed this in the other day, uh, which one is it here? It's this one here. I actually only went down as low as two kilohertz. And the, the funny thing is, is, you know, brain dead me as I was looking at it, didn't notice that the slider actually could, could have kept going. I guess I was so focused on what I'd been previously used to, right? So anyways, kind of funny. But what I did here, just to give you guys a quick overview, is I took my preset uh, for the dialing in video of the Red Gen, Rev Gen Purple the other day, and I kept it how I had it dialed in. With this uh, high shelf EQ, with all the frequencies below 650 cut by 2 dB and all the frequencies above 2 kilohertz, which was the old limitation, boosted by 2 dB. My preference would have been able to go down lower than that, but we didn't previously have that option. So what I did is I set up a three snapshot preset off of this and I brought in my old split crossover technique. So just as a recap about that, I put a split block with two, two gain blocks and I changed it to the split crossover. I set the crossover point at 650 hertz and I boost all, oh, that says 1.9, I boost all the frequencies above that by 2 dB and all the frequencies below that I cut by 2 dB using the gain blocks. Okay, so that's, uh, snapshot number one, split crossover. When I go to snapshot number two, that bring, cuts those out and that brings in low and high shelf with the non-preferred settings, let's call it. And then when I go to snapshot three, I have those turned off and I have the high and low shelf, but now at my preferred settings, much like the split crossover. So I wanna do a quick comparison. So here's how I dialed the sound in the other day uh, with the high and low shelf with all the frequencies above two kilohertz being boosted 2 dB. And I really like the way this sound. A lot of you guys have really enjoyed it and sent me comments on it, so I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Okay, nice stuff. What happens then if I go to the split crossover as I used to have it, as I started this whole thing out as? Here's the tone like that. Let's 
switch between that as I play just a little riff between those two. So I'm going to go between the split crossover and the high shelf being set at two kilohertz to hear any subtle differences. Take a listen. And sorry, just watch up here for when it switched. You guys notice that difference? What I find is, and here's why I did that. What I find is the frequencies in and around four to 500 hertz usually give a little bit of that low mid muddiness to a sound. And by taking those out gently, we kind of open the sound up. But everything above 650 hertz I find goes into where there's a lot of nice warmth and meat in the guitar tone. So I don't really like those uh, to be taken out, but I also like to maybe gently boost them to make up for the other low mids that we've taken out for the mud, if that makes sense. That's just kind of my way of thinking about it. So what I found with, with the old system on the two kilohertz is I wasn't now able to gently boost those frequencies between 650 and two kilohertz, which was just taking away from the warmth and maybe adding just a hair too much bite. These are subtle changes, very, very subtle changes, right? So again, if now listen for that and listen for a little bit more warmth while still retaining the cut when we use the split crossover, okay? So here's the two kilohertz one. <laughs> I like how the split crossover adds body back in. A nice bit of fullness, but without the mud, but we retain that sparkle on top, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's see how that now compares to using the new adjusted high and low shelf where we have the high shelf now adjusted down to 650 hertz. So here's a split crossover and I'll shift between those. We shouldn't hear much, if any, difference. Let's take a listen. Here's the split crossover first and watch up there again to see when I switch. I don't hear any difference anymore. Now let's listen to the two high shelf EQs compared to one another to hear that subtle difference again. So here is the, the, the high shelf at two kilohertz. think. Again, this is going to really be up to personal preference and some folks may like it with the two kilohertz setting. Again, this is not me telling you how you have to set it, but now at least we have the option. So that really, it seems like a small thing, but this really opens up a lot of tone shaping possibilities in a much more simple setup now, sort of equaling what I came up with with that split crossover technique before, but now we can do it with one single block, much more streamlined and much more simple. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys just in case like myself, when I first got the software quite a, some time ago, I didn't even notice that, right? Um, so I, I'm glad that's, oh, one other word, on the pod go. 
that has not been implemented yet. And that was just a little oversight, okay? Just so you guys know in case anybody questions it. I've already been in contact with the company. Um, they're aware of it now and that's going to be fixed in short order. Uh, so it's coming. It's really, it was, you know, it's not something that the Poggle can't do, obviously. They just got implemented in there. So it's coming. I don't know when, but it is coming and they're aware of it just so anybody who has that question uh, understands where we're at with it. All right. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. I have a great RevGen Ultimate preset for the Helix up on the marketplace right now. It's a multi-snapshot version of this, but even with a few more tweaks, I think to even make it a little bit better. Uh, and there's also a Stomp version coming, and there's also now a Pod Go version, obviously a little scaled back version available on Marketplace, as well as I have a, a British preset pack for Pod Go up on Marketplace, and I also have a Dumble, uh, Dumble-ish, I call it, uh, preset pack up for Pod Go on Marketplace too. So just go check out my Pod Go, uh, or my, my Marketplace presets. That's how I help to keep this whole thing going. And if you guys enjoy what I do, maybe you can grab a pack or two. Thank you guys again for the support. Please like the video, share it if you don't mind, and uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell notification if you haven't already, and I will be back soon with some more content. Thanks so much again for tuning in, guys. Ciao for now.